Cyprus earthquake explained. What a 5.3 magnitude tremor reveals about the eastern Mediterranean. Hello, explorers. Welcome back to Discovery Learning Hub. Today we're breaking down the recent 5.3 magnitude earthquake that rattled Cyprus on November 12, 2025. It shook buildings across the island, was felt as far as Lebanon, and reminded everyone in the region that the earth is constantly in motion. Let's go beyond the headlines and uncover the science behind the quake, how it happened, what it tells us about the tectonic setting of Cyprus, and why this area is more active than you might think. According to The Independent, the quake struck around 11.32 a.m. local time near the coastal city of Paphos, with a depth of about 15 kilometers. That's considered a shallow earthquake, and shallow quakes typically cause the strongest shaking at the surface. The European Mediterranean Seismological Center recorded its magnitude at 5.3, a moderate but noticeable event. Buildings in Paphos were evacuated as a safety precaution, but thankfully, no major damage or injuries were reported. So what caused it? To understand we need to zoom out, literally, to see the tectonic plates that shape the eastern Mediterranean. Cyprus lies near the boundary between the African plate and the Anatolian microplate, which itself is part of the broader Eurasian plate system. The African plate is slowly moving northward at roughly 2.5 centimeters per year, being pushed beneath Eurasia in what's known as a convergent plate boundary. But here's the interesting twist. Rather than a single clean subduction zone, the region around Cyprus features a complex network of faults, including the Cyprus Arc and the Anatolian Fault System to the north. The Cyprus Arc marks the southern edge of this tectonic interaction. It's a curving fault system where parts of the African plate are thrusting beneath the Eurasian margin, creating compressional stress. When enough strain builds up, it's suddenly released along these faults, and that's what we feel as an earthquake. Geologists describe this as a thrust fault mechanism, although smaller strike slip motions are also common due to lateral shearing. Now let's talk about the seismic waves themselves. When a fault slips, it releases energy in two main forms. P waves, primary waves. Compressional waves that travel fastest and are the first to be detected by seismographs. S waves, secondary waves. Slower shear waves that move the ground side to side and usually cause more noticeable shaking. These waves then interact with surface waves, which can travel long distances. That's why people in Lebanon, over 200 kilometers away, felt the tremors from this quake. At magnitude 5.3, the energy released is equivalent to roughly 1,000 tons of TNT. That's enough to rattle buildings, especially older or unreinforced ones, but not usually enough to cause major structural collapse unless the epicenter is directly below a populated area. What helped prevent serious damage in Cyprus is a combination of factors. Distance from the epicenter. The strongest shaking occurred offshore or in sparsely built areas. Improved Building Codes Cyprus enforces seismic design standards that account for moderate regional hazards. Depth and Energy Direction The quake's depth limited surface acceleration compared with a shallower event of the same magnitude. Cyprus has experienced stronger earthquakes in the past. In 1996, a magnitude 6.8 quake struck near Paphos, causing damage but few casualties. Historical records even mention destructive quakes in 1222 AD, which leveled parts of Paphos entirely. So while 5.3 may sound modest, it's part of a long-term pattern that geologists monitor closely. Scientists study these moderate quakes because they help map hidden faults and refine seismic risk assessments. Each event gives seismologists data on how energy travels through the crust beneath Cyprus and that, in turn, helps engineers improve earthquake-resistant infrastructure. For instance, researchers model how ground acceleration varies with soil type and depth, since soft coastal sediments can amplify shaking compared to hard rock foundations. Preparedness Tips From a public safety standpoint, this quake is a reminder to stay prepared. Secure heavy furniture and fixtures in homes and offices. Practice the drop, cover, hold on routine. No safe outdoor evacuation areas. Follow updates from the Cyprus Geological Survey Department and local civil defense authorities. So, to recap, a magnitude 5.3 earthquake struck Cyprus near Paphos, 
triggered by ongoing compression between the African and Eurasian plates along the Cyprus arc. The quake released the built-up tectonic stress without causing major damage, a small but powerful reminder of the immense geological forces shaping our planet. If you enjoyed this scientific breakdown, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and tap the bell icon for more Earth Science Explainers every week. Stay curious and stay safe.